Hi, so I was going to leave this until later because I tend to do the practical stuff first and the theory stuff after. But um, there's been such a lot of interest in this, there's such a lot of suggestions. I thought I'd go through the ideas that I'm thinking about on how to implement this low to no power desalination thing. In the previous video, we talked about this column where the column was greater than 34 feet, so we could use barometric head to create a vacuum here, and that if we heated that, that salt water would evaporate at, at lower than its normal boiling point. So we're looking around about somewhere between 40 and 55 degrees centigrade to be able to get that water to evaporate. Now obviously that's one of the challenges is to actually get that water back out. And one of the things I was thinking about was the system where what we do is set up an identical column But this time, this identical column contains fresh water. Now, if we link those two columns up, then because we've got a difference in partial pressure between the salt water and the fresh water, that is, the fresh water is slightly greater, what it's going to do naturally, or want to do naturally, is the water wants to evaporate from there and go across to the salt water. So that's what it wants to do. What we want to do is reverse that cycle. Now that's quite easy, as long as we keep an 18 to 15 degrees centigrade temperature difference. That is, that side has to be 18 to 15 degrees greater than that side. So if we have this at 40 degrees centigrade, that needs to be 25 degrees centigrade, and that would mean that is reversed. So instead of going from the fresh water to the salt water, what it will do then, is go from the salt water to the fresh water and it will just do that automatically. Now we can assist that by adding extra heat or adding extra cooling here but as long as that's maintained it's going to do that. Now as it does that obviously the water will be evaporated off from the top here and what will happen is that this level will drop because that will always remain the same. Reverse side of it this would be filling up with water, you would think that would fill up, but it won't. Because of the barometric head, what will happen is that will stay the same, and that water will start to overflow here. So in order to collect this stuff, we don't have to close anything. What we do is put in an overflow pipe. So we have a pipe like that. Then when that gets sufficiently high, it'll just overflow, and we'll get a flow of fresh water out of that side. Here, all we have to do is put a reserve tank or a source of seawater and feed our seawater in at the same rate that it's lost. So we get seawater in, fresh water out, by maintaining this system at the head. <coughs> now, there are a couple of sort of problems still with that. One of the problems is that this um, salt water contains gases. Dissolved oxygen, dissolved carbon dioxide, that sort of thing. And as it does this, the gases will come out of solution. So this will fill with gas, and we have to have some way of removing that gas. Now the easiest thing is a periodic maintenance shutdown. You shut it down, pump the water to the top with a little valve on top, and that will squeeze the gases out. Then you turn the pump off, close the valve, turn the pump off, the whole thing will sink back down again to this equilibrium condition, and then we can go along and do that. Now that was a suggestion by Joseph Richardson, which I thought was a really cool suggestion. The other problem we've got is the brine. As this, this salt water evaporates, it gets more and more concentrated, and the standard way of referring to it is brine. You have to remove the brine. Now, a relatively simple way of doing that would be if we increase the size of this here, make that a bit of glass that the sun makes, then the water is just going to go there. It won't go up because of the heavy pressure, it will just go there. As that evaporates, then the brine is going to collect here. Again, if we have an overflow pipe, as that brine collects, then we get our brine waste out from the top there. We don't do that so much, then that will evaporate there and collect salt, so we can actually collect the salt from this there. So the gas pressure and the brine can be taken care of by a couple of simple modifications. The other thing that would work really, really well, obviously, is instead of having this as a straight line, we put it in an angle. And we put a cooling jacket around it. 
and run that as a condenser. Then that system there is going to be pretty much automatic. Now that was the first thought I had about it. Now obviously having a 30 foot high column is um, a bit restricted in some senses. There's no real problem if you want to set this up as a desalination factory because having something that's four floors high doesn't really matter. You're going to churn out millions of litres of this stuff. Lots of factories are that big. So having a big old columns like that in a factory, no problem whatsoever. Trying to get a column like that into a smaller unit obviously creates a lot of problems. So <coughs> one of the thoughts that I had here was what we're doing is trying to use the barometric pressure. We can't use that, we need to reduce the column height. So instead of having that at 34 foot high, we want that at say, six foot high. Then what we equally need to do is reduce the pressure over this part of it so that that will still drop down to create that um, situation. So it's not that part of it, it's that part of it. It'll still drop down. So what we do there is put a pump in here so that the pump will take the water vapour through, maintain the um, actual difference in pressure and incidentally remove the gases. Now if we put a pump in there, there's no need for this fresh water column. We can just have a fresh water receiving tank. Now that's obviously a um, more expensive in terms of energy because we're running a pump here. So whenever you do these things, there's always a payoff, if you like. On the one hand, if we don't want to use that much energy, we need to make it 30 foot high. On the other hand, if we want to make it about six foot high, we're going to need to input some energy. If we do input some energy, then instead of having the sunlight, why not just put a heater here? Because we're going to have to heat that to around about 40 degrees centigrade. So we've got an energy cost involved in the pump, involved in pumping the cooling water, and involved in heating it that energy cost is still going to be an awful lot less than the energy cost for a desalination unit. Now, there is another little adaption that would work really, really well like that. Instead of having that heater as a heater within that box, what we would do is have our feed water, salt water supply coming in here in a spray nozzle. So it would spray the salt water out. If we heat this section, to around about 40 to 50 degrees, and that's got a lower pressure, when you spray that out, it will immediately evaporate. So we've got a flash evaporation, low temperature, low pressure system. So those are the kind of ideas that I've been playing around with in how to get this actual water out there so that it can be used. So there is one other one which is actually currently being tested, and that's with a two column system. And this time, what you do is spray in your salt water, again at between 40 and 50 degrees C so that you get flash vaporization. But on this side here, we're spraying fresh water and that acts to cool it down. So having those two sprays there helps that happen. And that's a system that's already been tested. It uses pumps to raise that water there to do that. But it's another interesting system. <coughs> now there is one other idea which Personally, I thought it was an idea of great brilliance. Now, it's not my idea, it's an idea from a friend of mine called Aaron Harper. Aaron, um, according to me, is a bit of a genius, actually. He's a very, very clever man. Um, and he suggested this to me, and I thought it was great. Let's go back to our single column system. Thirty-four foot high. Now, let's say we take that spray evaporator idea, spraying our water in there at around about forty to fifty. Something really interesting is going to happen. <coughs> that water is obviously going to be pure water. That's what we're going to be getting in there from the water vapor. As it condenses, it's actually not going to mix. We're going to get this area here because. Fresh water is less dense than salt water. So the salt water is going to be in the lower region here, and we're going to have a band of fresh water sitting on top of the column. Now, if we can insert a pipe in there, we can pull that fresh water out. Valve and pump, incidentally. We can pull that fresh water out of a single column. 
what we'd need to do obviously is have some kind of sensor and my thought was to have a sensor that sensor, uh, sensed resistivity or conductivity if you like so we sense that and it will test the water to see what the saline concentration is when the conductivity goes too high you're getting into the salt water region you can shut off the valve and stop drawing out the fresh water so a sensor reading the salinity of this water here would enable us to pull off that fresh water layer now apparently it doesn't deal very well with rough seeds or contamination these are problems to look at there are also other problems to look at with this but i like that idea because it's quite simply a single column idea Anyway, like I said, there was such a lot of interest in this, I thought I'd share those ideas with you, and thank you very much for listening.